What's up guys, Jester here, gonna be going over Web2 Invested. And for time's sake, I'm not gonna read that one, it's really long. So we get the web page, we see that this is what we get, and over here is actually Ryan Thompson's information, that's probably what we'll be getting rid of. So now we're just gonna go through the site, and we're gonna try to find, just check out all the links, and see if we can find anything that might let us exploit something and it looks like they just redirect to their main um, URLs up here and let's contact let's check login and they both have forms that we might be able to exploit but let's just keep looking let's click that and again we're sent to contact but this time we're sent to uh, question mark issue equals personal so let's try a remote file inclusion on this And it looks like that's how they were hacked last time, so they are preventing that now. And they think we're a hacker, so we are being logged. So that's not the way to go. Well, let's go over that post I made in the linktionary section. It just gives us more information about um, local file includes and local file includes just means that we're going to try to open a file already loaded on their server so if we check let's just do index to see if it's available and yes it is open to local file inclusions so if it's open to local file inclusions we can view and it's a unix server we can view the password shadowed or can possibly in the configuration files so let's try going to get into the password file so you're just going to type dot dot slash dot dot slash as many times as you want slash etc slash password and I say as many times as you want because you can't go past the root folder so you can go crazy at it uh, you should only need about seven of them though and we get this so thank you but you have served your purpose so and we will look up password just to see what each of these stands for and the first one is the username that's where the user logs in uh, the password an X character indicates that it's going to be in the shadow file so we'll be checking that out in a second and just go up here copy this and I'll put it in a new tab with pass or uh, shadow so we can see so that one we do have access to um, and the other thing we want to take note from this one is the home directory that this login is used so if we take this information and we see that it's in there's an admin panel so let's see if we can get the password first so we get root and then here's our hash password and if we go over to the shadow f section of this one oops, too far. we'll see we will find out that it is encrypted and if it's dollar sign one dollar sign it means it's md5 based encryption uh, at this time i want to throw a shout out to author three who worked with me on this one and help me find the password and the shadow so from here we're going to go to the admin panel and it looks like it's under construction so let's check out the source code and see if we can get access to this one so we're going to go into the authorization and we here we have check pass so we notice that the form is sent to check pass so that's the form that's doing the uh, the function that's doing the authorization and we see it's auth plus space plus code and we conveniently have auth and code up here so if we copy these and put them in we should gain access to at least a temporary um, admin control panel and here we do so now we just need to enter our credentials and we know that it's root and we just need to decrypt the password so we're going to take this one over to I'm going to use backtrack 4 
and use John the Ripper. So we have multiple different things we can use and the first thing we're going to do is um, you're going to put your information in here. You're going to need the shadow file and the password file. I have mine in the etc directory on in John the Ripper and I have the password file located in password and in the shadow file. I have the shadow file stuff. So I'm going to go back and we're going to run uh, on shadow with the if you just run this it'll tell you what parameters it needs so we need the password file and so we're gonna do go to our password file now and then we also need to add in the shadow file and it should give us a new just all of the stuff generated um, so let's store that into uh, let's just do hash.db for this and it's going to store all that information oh, I forgot the we need the caret operator and it's going to put all that in there so if we look at hash.db we should get this plus a whole bunch of other stuff like bin and um, like this. That's what you guys should get. So now we need to run John on on that. So we're gonna do John and just to see the commands. Now I'm gonna use word list and we're gonna put in our dictionary file and then we're gonna do users root and then the file for me it's crack.db and it's gonna load the hash and it's gonna start cracking it and as soon as you do you guys should be able to find out the password good luck um, I'd also like to throw a shout out to Kool-Aid for helping me find out that it was this page that find out it was an MD5 hash and he also helped me work with John the Ripper so that it would work to retrieve the password. So thanks, Kool-Aid.